my diagram that has the anatomy of street confrontation or confrontation, you'll see that um, there is a point where you go physical. All right, so most of it, self-defense, you know, you're, you're trying to de-escalate, you're trying to avoid the situation, you're thinking about um, winning the pre-fight, and then if you have to go and you can't avoid the pre-fight, you go into the fight, and then obviously you have to think about post, everything you do now, everything you plan for, you're trained for, you got to think about the post-fight, which means, you know, you're in court. So everything, you want to win in all, in all environments, in all phases, pre-fight, fight. fight Post fight, you obviously want to stay in the pre fight and avoid de escalate. But if you're brought into it and you cannot um, avoid it, then there's a part in that diagram where it shows you, you you go into the physical. So, you know, obviously you're not going to square off with anybody, you're going to be trying to de escalate and then you're either going to preempt or you're going to react, right? So, if you were say you react, for example, you know, just like that I talked about in the machete or the knife thing, you react and now the fight's on. Or now the attacks on you're like you, know, you can still try to you know de-escalate, but once he's going after you, um, if you happen to have one of these, or let's say you're you're in, you know you're by your car or something, and you're you're trying to put groceries in or something, and then you get accosted at that time, you go through the full cycle of trying to de-escalate, and it's and it's obviously not happening, or somebody has mistaken identity and they think you did something to them, you're able, you're able to reach this. So at that point, you're still. Uh, you know, you're still saying, hey, back off, or hey, you know, we don't need to do this type of thing, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm going to call the police or whatever. You're in this mode, now you have this. So, it's really within that small context of an overall scenario that where this applies. This is not, uh, you know, in my opinion, the techniques of the Filipino martial arts where you're, where you're dealing with, you know, stick on stick. That doesn't apply. That That's neutral combat. Uh, so, anyway, I don't want to belabor that. What is the practicality of these? Obviously, you know, you can't carry these. I mean, you could, you know, this is shorter, you probably could, I don't know, this is too long, but I mean, if you had a shorter one, you know, you're, you're talking about like a um, impact weapon. Um, so carrying them is really not, if you're going for walks, I mean, you might be able to carry something like this. I, I think you could, I mean, it's a walking stick. Uh, it'll talk, you know, you go walking, you know, you have a dog, I think this is fine, you know, it all depends on how you carry it. You could carry it like this, etc. Um, so I do, this has a more of a bludgeoning effect, if you ask me. I mean, this is, whereas this guy here has a whipping effect. So. You know, it's probably less lethal than that. This is less lethal than this. Um, can you knock somebody out with this? Possibly. If you, if you watch the Dog Brothers Martial Arts, dogbrothers.com or Dog Brothers Martial Arts, a DBMA, you'll see a lot of full contact stick fighting, and or they wear minimal equipment. It's basically like a um, mixed martial arts uh, competition or fight, except they start out with well, they use sticks. You can go all out. Um, and all they wear is a fencing mask and then maybe some hockey gloves, but it's all out, boom, boom, you know. So you'll see that they're going at it. Um, sometimes they have to stop the fight. So now remember, this is that's not self-defense. Those are combat sports or combat activities. There's mutual consent. Remember, in a self-defense situation, there is no mutual consent. One guy, one person is the aggressor, the other person just wants to, you know, live their own life and be un unbothered. So there's some there's, uh, mutual consent in this type of Filipino martial arts. Um, they're combative styles. And they, I don't know. I guess you can put this in your trunk. And it looks benign enough where what is that? But, you know, this would definitely uh, effectively tow trucks. So... Oh, another thing, last thing I wanted to show you is that if you're going to start using things like that, if you need to train and strengthen your forearms, I don't know if you heard of fat grips, but these are called bomber grips, um, demoose, it says www.demoose.com. But I got these off of eBay for 20 bucks. If you, these are the 2.75 diameter. 2.75 inches in diameter if you get the fat grips for like 40 bucks 50 bucks 60 bucks these were 20 bucks so 
for those of you that train with weights, you know that the thicker grip helps build this. So if you put this on, you can put this on a barbell, a dumbbell. I got two of these. They come in sets of two. Um, the fact that you have a bigger grip here, if you're lifting something, you probably will. T these will more your forearm muscles will tire sooner because of the, the grip. So you're developing that as well. So I use that to kind of help with the strengthen the techniques and the movements. So